fired up today for news you can use. Let's get started right now. Um, we've got two big topics that we're going to discuss, and Ashley's going to share a screen here in a second. Uh, and these are pretty weighty, meaty, lofty topics. Uh, I would recommend you get your yellow pad out and your note uh, taking instrument device of some kind. Uh, grab a you know cold one, uh, Diet Coke, beer, whatever you want, and a bag of popcorn because we're going to dive right into this thing. I'm going to tell you guys why you're all going to become a millionaire one year from today. We're going to start off by talking about the Great Wall of China. Everyone's heard uh, the term probably Chinese wall. And if you're like me, you want to know the origin of phrases and where that came from. Uh, the Chinese wall uh, came from actually the Great Wall of China. And it was at the time it was built, it was an impenetrable device, object. Yeah. On one side were the Chinese and the emperors, and on the other side were the hordes, the mongrels, and everybody else. They could not get through. It was a, an inviolate, in, impenetrable wall, a device. In modern day terminology, it has come to be used as the gold standard between intelligence agencies, governments, divisions of government, things like that. They would put up what they call a Chinese wall between uh, and give you an example, if you have a certified public accountant, a CPA doing work for you, he, they can't just go tell your information to their next client. They can't say anything about it. They have to put up what's called a Chinese wall between your information and the next clients. And it, it carries some teeth and it has always been something that had been sacrosanct until today. And today, uh, this, this event happened and now you, you're gonna have a hard time finding it in the news cycle, but it popped up for about an hour. Um, it's on the dark web, you can still read about it, but Fannie Mae came out and predicted where interest rates were going to be a year from now. And contrary to what the Fed is saying about interest rates going up and up and up, they are saying that interest rates for homeowners will be between four and four and a half percent a year from now. That is a dramatic shift and is totally opposite uh, what the Fed and the other pieces of our government are out there telling everybody and what's going on out in the marketplace. So I don't know if you're a conspiratorial kind of person, uh, you want to believe that uh, you've got sides of the government's talking to each other. Something happened. Somebody, you know, has done something wrong, is going to stay after school, is going to get a whooping over in Fannie Mae. They weren't supposed to let that information out. But the bottom line is it's going to tremendously affect you guys next year. It's going to affect you positively. So if what really comes to fruition, and we've been talking about this, uh, we've predicted that later next year, you'll actually see interest rate drops. And now, according to Fannie, uh, according to this accidental leak, um, you know, this is going to happen next year. So in spite of the Fed saying they're going to raise interest rates and they continue to do it, expect another 75 basis points increase this year and this month, the month of September 2022, uh, evidently there's some plan in the works to dramatically drop interest again next year. That will create a huge demand. So I thought I'd go back to the second part of this news. You can use. Let's explain a little bit about how the market works. Okay, and, and in real terms here, this is our, our general line. Um, Starting back here in October 21, sellers, there was very few sellers and the number of sellers has increased dramatically. Uh, got to the point here in, I believe, April of this year, 2022, when the buyer line intersected and, and came across. In other words, there was a, from our standpoint, there was an even market, an even number of, of active buyers, buyers who could buy and, buy and sellers who could sell at that point in time. Now, the mainstream news media and uh, the realtor groups out there are, will be giving you information that's about four months old. They're going to start talking about this now, even though this was four months ago, a little bit more than four months ago. Um, they're going to start discovering, gee, sales have been dropping, prices have been dropping, you know, buyers are falling off, buyers aren't falling off, uh, buyer numbers continue to climb, even the number of buyers that can afford a home loan, even at 6% or 5.66 as of today can afford it, but the, the buyer line grows slowly. If you watch this thing, this is the predictions that I'm looking at. Uh, and, and here back, this is the seller line's blue, the buyer line's green, they, they changed. And when you have more buyers than sellers, you've got what's called a seller's market, okay? In the seller's market that we had from basically two, three years ago until I think April, four months ago, five months ago, um, the, the sellers were in charge. 
because there was less sellers, more buyers, they could make their own price, they could make their own terms, that kind of thing. Then this thing with topsy-turvy because of the Fed and because of these other factors that we've talked about in recent news you can use. And now we are literally in a buyer's market, okay? In a buyer's market, it's the other way around where there are less buyers and more sellers, literally on a unit by unit basis. And you'll see more of them come to the table, more sellers come to the table needing to sell quickly. The, the seller's markets are controlled by the real estate uh, community, the realtors, realtor.com, the local MLS and the local real association of realtors. The realtors groups basically control a seller's market because it's all about the seller's listing and getting as much as possible. When you go to a buyer's market, which we're in now, and I've said will probably last 12 to 18 months, and I'm going to correct that tonight. I'm going to give you a new prediction. When the buyer's market, the investors are in charge, okay? We control the deal. This is our party now. This is our time to go out there and make money. And the reason that I think and these two stories tie together, uh, that we're going to have a longer than a 18 month market is because if they go out here next year sometime and all of a sudden interest rates drop, the, the effective buyer number is more like this. It's much higher, but these are people who can't afford 5.66 or 6% interest, but they can afford a 4% mortgage. They certainly can afford a 4% mortgage. Sellers, they are desperate out there right now. For any of you guys who are on the phones on a daily basis, Brandy can tell you, we just had a call today about this. These sellers are scrambling. These guys are leaving a sinking ship. The early ones are gonna get on the life raft. The later ones are gonna drown. And we're seeing more and more of that. But there are buyers and there are tons of buyers out there. They just need cheaper mortgage rate or cheaper prices, frankly. And about a year from now, you're gonna get both. And the only people, remember, in a buyer's market, we'll still be in a heavy buyer's market, but we'll be able to control it. So with a lower interest rate, if the Fed keeps interest rates low, once they start dropping them next year, and I think they'll have to, because I think they're going to clobber the economy the second half of this year, this buyer's market could go out two, three, four years. I think it's, my prediction, it's going to go about 40 months. You're going to have a 40-month buyer market. I've never seen that. I've been in this thing, 23 coming up, 24 years. I have never seen... Uh, even a little bit longer than a year was about the longest I've seen. I saw the one in 2000. I saw the one in 2008. I saw the drop in 2014-15. Uh, this is going to be the best time by far because you're going to have a lot of sellers, a lot of buyers, and you're going to have cheap money. And that is a feeding frenzy for all of you out there. You're going to be able to make money hand over fist. Just a matter of how much you want to make, how quick, where you want to make it. You want to work you know, one day a week, six days a week. What do you want to do? How much you want to make? You want to make six figures, seven figures, eight figures. You could, there'll be people in this business who will be able to make literally eight figures in a year uh, with a large enough organization and the capital behind them in order to do this. But this is a golden time. And we've talked about this being a perfect storm, what we call triple witching hour in the financial and the securities business. This is like a quadruple witching hour. You can't get any better than Lots of motivated sellers, lots of motivated buyers and cheap money. And I think you're going to see all three of those come this time next year. So keep your eye on the news, the fake news, the stuff they try to cover. But we'll try and keep you abreast and keep your eyes also open for these little tidbits of things and see how they play out. Uh, and, and like I said, the Chinese wall, in my opinion, got violated today between one version of the government, one, form, one part of the government and another for a short period of time. But it gave you an insight as to where they're going and, you know, whether they're manipulating the market for the benefit of the government or not is a whole different. That's for some people even further out there on the conspiracy thing than me to talk about. But there's something going on. I think from our standpoint, this is it right here. It's buyer's market as far as the eye can see. Um, and they're going to allow us as investors to make the money here. So. Uh, keep your uh, your eyes, ears, and, and mouth open. Keep your hands out and keep your hopes up. All right, that's it for news you can use for tonight.